Riding with the Rabbi. Hello friends, here we are again, another episode of Riding with the Rabbi. Today we have two special guests, one you can see, one you can't see. Uh, Cliff Aaron is in the front seat, and in the back seat is Ford or Fievel. I don't know, maybe we can catch a glimpse of him afterwards. Um, the truth is, is that now, now I'm back driving. Uh, the last couple of episodes I was actually riding, so it wasn't riding with the rabbi, it was the rabbi riding with someone. Um, and we were able to change that. Cliff was going to drive, but his car's in the shop. I'm a little offended. I wanted to. <laughs> anyway, Cliff, how are you doing today? Everything's great, Rabbi. Thank you for having me. No, thanks for coming. So actually, we are on our way to the Ray Kushner Yeshiva High School, where I've been planning this for a couple of years, but together with Rabbi Kirsch, uh, Cliff is going to speak to the entire high school body as their seed speaker. Every week they have a an inspirational speaker. and. Who is more inspirational than Cliff Aaron? I, I ask you, our loyal audience of seven, <laughs> Mom, who, who can do better? Anyway, um, are, are you, do you get nervous when you speak in front of a crowd? Not usually, because I can't see them. So it's like I'm talking in an empty room. Interesting. Yeah. Do you, do, you try, do you visualize, do you try to see people there or imagine what... Or do you not even bother with the surroundings? Like, I'm like, what goes on in that, your, I'm curious. That's a great question. I, I do try to get a feel for the room. When I walk in, I can tell how big it is usually. You know, by basically the sound bouncing off the ceiling and the walls. But in terms of where people are sitting, um, I, I usually use a cheap trick. I'll ask them to applaud at the beginning, and then I'll see if they're surrounding me or all in front of me. But uh. then I can thank them because I can say, my mother's gonna ask what, whether I was well received. And I can say, yes, they, they clapped for me. <laughs> It's a bad trick. <laughs> you know what? You gotta do what works, but it's something that we would never in a million years just even enter into our minds, that right. possibility of having to think of how do you, you know, we see what's in front of us. And right. I, one of the things, I, I still think that when, when you and Cameron spoke at Shul a couple of years ago, that ranks to my mind in the top three, top three speeches we've ever had at Eitz Chaim. Well, that's very kind of you, but I will tell you, I, I'm so proud of Cameron because you know, I think I had told you and the Rebbits in this afterwards that for me, it's cathartic. I can talk about it, it is what it is. Karen has never spoken about it. That was the first time right. she ever spoke and I just am so proud that she was able to do it and did it well. And obviously it was because of my persuasive nature. Absolutely, <laughs> believe me, you tried a lot. <laughs> and um, and how's it, how is it, are you back now, you're a trial attorney. Right. And I, you did mention to me over the last year that I think when you're on these Zoom depositions and, and and proceedings kind of does not work to your advantage right uh, something like that um, are you back in person in court yet unfortunately in New York no the courts are supposed to open up to in-person appearances and oral arguments and possibly even trials starting March 1st so I think we're getting closer I think Omicron put a real damper on things I hadn't been back to my office my office is closed so it's, wow. it's strictly on a voluntary basis and by the way has been since March of 2020 so I, but you don't I, get you don't get paid on a voluntary basis. No, I do okay, get paid. Okay. I do get paid. So we are expected to work from home, right? Which which is manageable. You can do it. I miss you know I miss the camaraderie. I miss the interpersonal connections with people. Um, but you know you, you lead by example. So I try to go in two days a week, and I was doing that. Uh, but when Omicron hit, which was like around the beginning of December, I hadn't been in the office in two months. So last week was the first week I actually went back for one day. I was in there this week. And I will start to go back one to two days a week just because I think it's important. And how good, I mean, I imagine, I'm going to imagine, but correct me if I'm wrong, how good is sort of your memory of, like when you walk into the office, you haven't been there in a while, I imagine you had a routine when you're going every day and you know what kind of, what to feel for and what, right. to, what to sense. Did it, did it change after not being there for so long or did it come right back? That is the beauty of Fievel. It's really amazing. My, my driver drops me off at the curb and, I t and it's probably 12 different doors I can go into in the front of my building. And I just say, I say, Ford, find the door. He goes to the door I want to go to because it's the closest door to my elevator bank. It's unbelievable. Wow. And then he takes me to the right eleva ele uh, elevator bank. There's probably six elevator banks. And he stops and points his nose right at the button. Really? So I, fo I follow his snout to the button, push it. And then I'm able to find the 39th floor because the, um, the numbers are tactile. So I push my way up there. Uh, we need a card key to get in. He knows to go right to where the card key button is. I swipe it, and it, once we walk in, 
I let him lead me right to my office. It's amazing. It really is. The amazing. nose knows. The nose knows. That's, it's, that's unbelievable. It's fascinating. I mean, with you know, dogs pattern. So once they've been to a place, they're pretty good at finding it again. So his memory is impeccable. It's, like, it's, uh, it's amazing. I'm sure it's all smell. I don't know if it's really brains, but maybe it's both. But it, the thing that always amazes me, my mom lives in a, um, in a facility which is pretty big in Sleepy Hollow, not far from where you came from, right. um, called Kendall on Hudson. Okay. And you've got to go up two different elevators and multiple halls and across a bridge. And when we get to the last elevator bank, I always say to Karen, Let, let's see if he can find the door. And we get out of the elevator and I say, find it. She doesn't live right by the elevator. And it's unbelievable. He turns two ways and the next thing I know, he's walking and he stops at a door. I go, is this the right door? And Karen will go, it's unbelievable. He's at the right yeah. door. So it really is fascinating. So to answer your question in a long-winded way, I, I really rely on him. If I had to do it with a cane, it would be more difficult. Interesting. And, and Fivel, we call him, I call him Fivel, but I, I gave him that name. His name is Ford, but you know, I had to give him a Jewish name when he's in Shul. Of course. Uh, but Fivel's nearing retirement. Is that, he is. is that true? He is. Much like you, Rabbi. He's getting yes. very close. Very old. Yes. <laughs> How old am I in dog years? Oh my God. I don't think you can count that. I, I, I think you've outlived Noah. <laughs> <laughs> Older than Methuselah. <laughs> wow. So what? So and so like, you then you told you have to go through a whole yes. two weeks in the uh, in three. three. I have weeks. to I have to live at the seeing eye for three weeks. I mean, it's very emotional because now you start with a new dog. Yeah. You have to have that complete trust. I mean, the dog will be fully trained when I get the dog. It's a matter of starting to work as a team again, being comfortable working with the dog with a trainer one on one and uh, working different environments such as urban so you're working city streets suburban where they may or may not be sidewalks and rural where a lot of times like in livingston there are no sidewalks and the dog has to try to keep you close to the curb and then of course dealing with all the distractions you come you know come across so right. that that tends to be quite emotional i am not looking forward to it and i also wonder the first time I grab the harness in the house for the new dog what is what is Ford right, going to do Ford's going to stay with you I'm sure it's, oh, yeah Ford will be our pet um, yeah, and I'm sure, I wonder if, like at night, he's like, "You think you want to take care of mine? I want to take care of you know." Yeah, uh, well, I'm sure once I put the the harness on the other dog, he's gonna like, "Okay, great, I get to sleep all day, have a nice life." So I think he'll be okay, but I do think at first he'll he'll wonder like, "What's going on?" It makes for a great like little short film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but he's so it's how many years are you with Ford now? Uh, eight and a half. So he's going to be ten the end of this month. So does it go? Is there a certain length of time that, or until, or just sort of till runs its course? Uh, you know, it, it's really different for every dog. Uh, but I will tell you that they tell you the average work life expectancy is eight to ten years of life. So he will live longer, hopefully. Yeah. But um, anywhere from eight to ten years when you've had the dog, it's usually time to start thinking because they get into some bad habits, which he does. Um, he gets a little bit distracted from other dogs now, whereas when I first got him, he would walk right past other dogs, not even look at him. Did you catch him, like, smoking in the backyard or something? It's close, <laughs> and I feel him turning his head, and I'm like, what's he going for? Uh, but because, it's, not, it's not part of the family. It's, he's part of you. He's, 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 I mean, he's, he's everything, right? It's, uh, yeah, it's, I, I equate, when you, when you lose a seeing eye dog, it's like cutting off your right arm. It, it absolutely is a part of you, yeah. He's, I say to Karen, he's with me more than I'm with you. I mean, I'm truly with Ford more than I'm with Karen. He goes on every business trip. He comes to work with me every day. I mean, just think about it. He's always with me. Do you miss traveling? Terribly, yeah. I, lo I love that part. I mean, it's, it's always a little stressful. But, you know, I found when I got into airports, there's people that help me and the dog to get to the gate. I'm comfortable on the plane, find my way to the taxi stand, get to the airport. They get me settled in my room and wherever I have to go. Um, you know, he's he's really good at that. I can give him directions and, you know, we usually find our way and if we get lost, I just ask somebody, could you tell me where the street is? And most people are pretty nice. Most of, has anyone ever not been nice? Well, I, I will, the story I might tell today uh, when we speak to the uh, students, but this is one of my favorite stories. When I first got my first dog, Alto, uh, we, I was in Buffalo and I had a case up in Buffalo and the courthouse steps are in the middle of the block. So I knew we were at the right block, but I had no way of finding the steps. So I said, I heard these steps behind me, I knew it was a man. And I said, excuse me, sir, could you tell me where the steps to the courthouse are? And he goes, yeah, it's right there. So obviously he pointed. I said, sir, I'm blind, that's why I have a seeing eye dog. And he says, I know, but your dog was looking. So I said, well, okay, if we're gonna, if we're gonna be in the theater of the absurd, I'll play. I said, but sir, my dog only speaks Spanish, do you? He goes, no, no, 10 feet to your left. They go, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, okay. 
So, uh, so I don't think that was mean. It's just that people, you know, we live in a visual. Yeah, society. it's hard to like we just say things all the time. Like, yeah. like I all like, oh, did you see that? Right. Oh, duh. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. so uh, you know, and you raise a lot of awareness about you know, sort of all appreciating our own senses. Right. And I'm sure the question you get a lot is, are your other senses sharper? Right. Yeah, and I believe that to be true. I think that is true. Sense of humor certainly is. Well, it's funny you say that. My my niece was probably seven or eight years old. Another cute story. And uh, she, uh, she was living with my sister up in Westchester. My sister was wor was shopping with Jackie. And a friend came up to her, this is when I was first diagnosed, and said, you know, oh, I feel so bad for Cliff. How is he doing? So my sister Mindy said, you know, it's really amazing. When you lose one sense, they say the other senses really do take over. And little Jackie looked up and said, yeah, Uncle Cliff's got a great sense of humor. <laughs> so I didn't realize that was the sixth sense. But, you know, I, I do think, to your point, I think it's very important. Uh, and I will tell you when I was first diagnosed, and I've told you this, that I didn't have a sense of humor. I lost my sense of humor. It was, there was nothing funny about anything. And, and now, you know, I've got to that point where it's total acceptance. And if you don't keep your sense of humor, yeah. just life's not worth a living. Right. So, um, and life is for the living, so. Yeah, yeah. So just, I want to switch gears a little bit before sure. we get to our destination. It's like cash cap, you know, like you have to like. <laughs> yeah, I want to get that last question. So. Double or nothing, let's do it. <laughs> um, thank Baruch Hashem, since I've known you, we, we've watched your family grow. Mm. Uh, all your children are happily married now. Mm -hmm. And I had a, a big portion in two of those. I was able to marry off two of your two children. Thirds. So mm -hmm. it was a, a tremendous success for me. And, and now, of course, you have uh, grandchildren uh, on the scene mm -hmm. and, and the families are growing. So uh, how's the rest of your family doing? And how, how does that feel to have all of your children married? Uh, how, how does that feel? It's it's really surreal because, I, you know, I'm, I turned 64 years old a couple of weeks ago. and. I'm way too immature to be 64. I just, I don't think of myself as the patriarch of the family. Like, I'll hang out with the sons-in-law, and I just feel closer to them in terms of age, but I'm not. Something happened along the way, and I just, I guess I aged. And it's it's very weird, but, you know. Age you get, is just something on your license, you know? Yeah, I agree. With, your I agree mentality with and then how you perceive yourself, that's a whole different thing. Correct. Um, it's phenomenal having grandchildren. You know, we have three now. We have fourth on the way. Hillary's pregnant with her third. The shot to have a matzlach. It's wonderful. Thank you. And it's just, it's fantastic. And these kids say things. I, just a perfect example to get off the blindness issue for a second. Uh, Ari and Claire came to our house after coming home from TBJ from school last week. And Ari ran to the bathroom and Claire, Claire's two years old. And uh, Kay, she calls Karen Gigi. So Karen says, um, Claire, can you do me a favor? Can you take your mask and Ari's mask into the bedroom and put it on the dresser? So, uh, so Claire says, sure, Gigi, of course, no problem. She goes, um, one, one thing. Karen says, what? She goes, what's a dresser? <laughs> and it's just, you know, you think of these kids as so smart and you realize, wait, they're still kids. And they yeah. just, they say things that just crack you yeah. up. Yeah. And, uh, and through our kids, great kids, you know, we, we live forever. So that's uh, that's 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 the greatest thing. Anyway, uh, I'm really looking forward to this talk this morning. But I'm, I'm glad that uh, we could spend this time and share it with, as like I said, with our with our six viewers. Uh, <laughs> oh, we're more... down to six. I thought we had seven. Yeah, lost, I said something. <laughs> I said something wrong last week. We lost one. But um, you know what? You're you're a great friend, a great friend of the shul, and an inspiration to all of us. And uh, I just want to want to thank you for spending a few minutes and uh, look forward to sharing many, many more great Absolutely. occasions. Well, on behalf of my family and the six listeners, we love you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, well, I want to tell everybody what we drink, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> Baruch Hashem. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.